Hi and welcome to this uh, video tutorial on writing editorials. Uh, my name's Andrew Johnson and this uh, video is based on combined ideas from Alan Weintraut and Ken Reiter from SlideShare. Um, I've modified it and put some of my own information in there as well and hopefully it's a good introduction to anybody who wants to write an editorial, uh, wants to get a handle on what they are, how they work and, uh, and how they can go about writing one. At the end of this, you should be able to uh, go on and write your own editorial, either for an assignment for school, for example, or hopefully for your brand new publication that's going to do really well. Good luck, well done you, hope it works out for you. So first up, what is an editorial? Let's take a look at the changing face of editorials today. Traditionally, editorials appeared in the newspaper, and for many people, they were the first thing that they read in the newspaper after the front page. You'd go and see what the newspaper was saying was the most important issue of the day. And so they were usually the anonymous voice of the, uh, the publication, either the editor or the owners or the board of governors or a journalist with a background in an issue trying to uh, get across the official stance of the newspaper on, a, on an important issue. Now this is an important idea because traditionally newspapers were meant to be non-biased. They were not meant to be pushing one side or the other. And so it was only in the editorial that you would get an opinion in the newspaper. They tended to be serious and carry a lot of weight as they were the official voice of the newspaper. They didn't usually have a byline on them, so they didn't usually have somebody's name on them. They were instead the anonymous voice of the publication. Now, of course, as newspapers are less important, uh, as the rise of the internet and vlogs and blogging and so forth has, has taken away the importance of the newspaper, they still exist, but they exist online, maybe as blogs, as vlogs, as tweets. And increasingly, they're online in blog formats. What's the purpose of an editorial? Well, that remains the, cha the same. They continue to be about the pen being mightier than the sword, that you know the, the masses rioting in the streets can be stopped with a good argument. And, and so the arguments need to be researched, they need to be intelligent, they need to be thoughtful, they need to make the audience think critically. They uh, are possibly trying to encourage an action by the reader. They're saying, you should go and do this. And so they, they tend to have an authoritative tone. They're more than just an opinion. They have to, therefore, be well-researched. They should not be easy to argue against. And they have to be tailored to their audience. They have to use points and language that is appropriate to the audience who's reading it. So the New York Times will tend to be very formal, have a lot of facts and figures, for example, whereas something written for a, a student newspaper or a student website will have to use language that engages the, the readers in a different way. Either way, word choice, language has to be deliberate in order to have an effect. So what are the most common types of editorial? There, there are a few common ones out there. The first is the explain or interpret editorial. And the explain or interpret editorial focuses on new laws, new rules, new things or technology, new ideas or new social movements. And is trying to make sense of them for you so you, you can form an opinion and you know what to think. These editorials uh, tend to explain things pretty clearly and present a, a balanced point of view before coming down on one side or the other. So, for example, a, an editorial on why Twitter is not the end of the world for journalism um, would, would go on to make the case that Twitter is really useful for something, but it's, you know, it's another tool for journalists rather than the end of the world. Most tutor, uh, sorry, most editorials. I keep saying tutorials for some reason. Most editorials tend to criticize, persuade, or reform. So they tend to be criticizing current policies and ideas and offering alternatives. They're persuading people towards those alternatives or urging people to take action specifically towards one alternative. So, for example, in 2015 and 2016, New Zealand was debating about getting a new flag, and and. I've put on the slide there the six different options that were presented to people in the first referendum. And 
if I, I favor the red peak flag, so I would have written an editorial that said, here's why red peak is the only real choice for the next New Zealand flag. And I would have outlined the arguments for that and shot down all the other flags as we went. Um, this is a very common type of editorial and it's designed to get people thinking critically about an issue. The third really popular type of editorial is praising or commending somebody, uh, making you think, yes, that was the right decision. So it could be about a decision or it could be about a person that the publication agrees with. And it usually goes on to try and persuade the reader that this was the correct path. So for example, the rich woman wisely uh, saved herself letting the evil thieving stowaway drown in the Titanic incident. And for those of you who haven't seen that movie, you won't get that joke, so don't worry about it. Um, other types of editorial that are less common, sometimes you get editorials that are marking special events, such as royal visits, uh, referenda, um, significant sporting events or significant national events or international events. So editorials, again, telling you what to think. Um, they, they might pay tribute to a person, so um, if somebody famous dies, you'd have an obituary uh, editorial saying why that person was an important person. If somebody imp important is born, um, a new king, um, Peter Jackson has a child that's going to be New Zealand's greatest new filmmaker, you'd write an editorial saying, congratulations, what a great thing, etc. Um, and sometimes you'll have an editorial that entertains. Um, either through satire or mocking an issue or a situation in order to make you realize, wait, this situation's crazy. Why are we doing this? And I've seen a few editorials uh, recently, I'm recording this at the start of 2016, making fun of Donald Trump, for example. Um, so how do you go about writing an editorial? Well, perhaps unsurprisingly, the steps for writing an editorial are the same as the steps for just about anything else. You consider your purpose, you consider your audience, you plan, you write, and you polish your piece of writing for that purpose, for that audience. So pre-planning is the first thing, choosing a topic, choosing a topic that will be interesting to your audience, uh, choosing an angle and the type of tutorial you want to go for. Are you for the issue? Are you against the issue? Are you explaining why Red Peak is the best flag? Are you explaining why it's not the best flag? Are you criticizing the other flags? You've got to decide on your angle and do your research first and plan your argument out. From there, you then write your draft. And you generally want to hook your audience in pretty quickly, state the facts, and then take down the other arguments and make your case and, and prove your case and have some sort of powerful conclusion at the end. This is no different to any other type of writing, but for a um, for an editorial, you really want it to, to, it tends to be short and punchy, you really want it to get their attention quickly. Finally, you then polish your draft. You take your editorial and you improve it, you improve it, you improve it. You remove words, you, you make it shorter, you make it punchier, you make it more authoritative, and you make it appeal to your audience as well as you can. Now, I've actually gone and looked at a couple of different um, thoughts on editorials and a couple of different structures, and I'm, we're just going to briefly look at them now. So the first up is from Ken Reiter on SlideShare. Don't know his real name, sorry. Um, but he uses the idea of hooking with an editorial lead, and he takes the the start and end of an editorial really seriously. So he talks about hooking with a lead and then finishing with a punchy conclusion, and he has a number of suggestions for what your lead should be like and what your conclusion should look like. So hooking with uh, um, a strong statement or a quotation or some storytelling or an order or instruction and so on. If you want details about this, go over to the slide here and take a look at it. Now what's interesting is he doesn't spend a lot of time on the middle, doesn't spend a lot of time saying what your body should look like. And that's where Alan Weintraut's approach tends to be uh, a little bit different. And he's a high school teacher and he's suggested here are particular steps you want to go through. Less of a focus on the, the start and the end, more of a focus on the middle. So starts with planning and then objectively stating the issue, outlining it factually as you would as a journalist, and then give the opposing viewpoint and then reject the opposing viewpoint and then 
let them have a point. Let them say, yes, they've got one good point about the flag, and that's blah, 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 blah. But all these other things make their decision you know, really bad, and outline it and, and use key phrases to really reinforce things into your reader's mind. Uh, again, he does talk with a concluding punch, that, uh, which I think is a really important idea. He does make a really important point about the use of I. Don't use it. You are the newspaper. You are the publication. You should never say, I think. Uh, it's, it's, you're, you're saying things as if they are true rather than saying, I think. So this is the best flag rather than, I think this is the best flag. What's your approach? That depends very much up to you and, and who, who your audience is and what your purpose is. You have to plan for purpose and audience. Personally, I like a combination of those two approaches. I, I like the idea of hooking them at the start, and then I like the idea of a really structured argument in the middle, and then a really punchy ending. But that's how I tend to write, and it tends to appeal to me. Would it appeal to a, a high school audience? Would it appeal to an adult audience? So you have to plan accordingly. So I guess the final step is, what's your argument? Who's your audience? What's your approach? And plan from there.